Evolving from honeypots to active deception defenses, the story begins with the original deception defense, the honeypot. It's a decoy system, full real operating system set up with desired fake data, often back in the day, credit card data or fake credentials. It's isolated off in its own little environment. It's monitored for activity. The goal is to divert and detect attackers with no real risk to data operations or users. Now there's, there's different types of honeypots. The peer honeypot, full-fledged system, full operating system, bug tap to monitor, kind of difficult to scale, use them in very specific instances. But since they're focused on containment, there's a desire to attract the attacker, learn the attacker methods, and even have the attacker install their malware tools and techniques, they're open to compromise for that. And so they're kind of something you want to watch closely to make sure you get what you want and you shut out the attacker. Uh, we then evolved into high interaction honeypots. These were virtual machine based. Uh, you get the benefit of many honeypots per device. They're easy to reset being VM based. But again, they're focused on containment, so they're also open to compromise, but a little bit easier to scale out. Then there's a pretty big shift. We moved to low interaction honeypots or medium interaction honeypots. These just emulate the desired services by attackers. So we don't have a full real OS operating system open to compromise. We have a small code base that's very secure, not open to compromise, but it also allows us to have scale and automation. And because of that, we can get many, many honeypots or decoys per server. Uh, and of course, we can start to put these across an organization without the risk of compromise. So the last version, the low interaction, medium interaction honeypots are focused on detection, where the first two are focused on containment. Let's take a look. Honeypot deployment. Originally, a research honeypot was outside a firewall, set up there to attract attackers, uh, to learn their methods, see if they install their code. We can study the code, possible attribution, and we can learn to mitigate that. We may use these inside at risk of compromise in our data centers, office networks, and services networks for malware research, email spam, or web services attacks that go after databases. So some specific cases, but again, not widespread use uh, and not really used as an alarm system, but more used as a containment strategy to learn about attackers and their techniques and tools. Now, how do we evolve from that stage of honeypots to active deception uh, through automation. So first we look at automated discovery. We map the network, we do a profile on all the assets, and we build out this discovery base. Now from that discovery base, we then can automatically build decoys that match the real environment as realistically as possible for the profile of the assets, the services they provide, how they communicate, and we want to create a very attractive environment. After the automation of building those, we deploy them through automation. So now we set out and we find the best places to put uh, these decoys with their selective interactive services and fake data. We also make deception deterministically uh, calculated so that we put breadcrumbs on real systems so they're found, so they lure attackers or malware to these decoys. So that interaction between the breadcrumb from the real system to the decoy system is really the modern focus for deception today. Now, we get our alerts from the decoys, poison data use like credentials, traps and beacons. We can also enhance it with network visibility to learn quite a bit. This whole environment is kept current for any changes in the network, any changes in the asset profile, that discovery base I mentioned, we automatically update the whole environment. So through automation now, we map out the network, we build the decoys, we go through all these steps. And what we end up with is an environment that a tier one security analyst can manage a deception environment with less than five hours per week. So we've taken a high degree of automation to remove all the human effort. Let's take a look at a deception deployment now. So different than honeypots, we have the automated phases I just mentioned. And our goal then is to roll those out where they're built in emulated services. So we're not putting thousands of real operating system uh, decoys all across our network open to compromise. Well, we have their decoy systems built in emulation with the goal being detection. We want the attacker to land on the real asset, find the breadcrumb, which you can see is the red asterisk, and then make that move as a lure over to the decoy, and we can do our detection work. So again, we want to have a post-breach detection system that's focused on detection without any risk or expanding our attack surface area, which is a very different strategy from the original Honeypot design. You can also use these decoys externally if desired, or you may want to do a mix. You may want to put the traditional honeypot uh, on the external network and keep that research focus because you have that team and you have those skill sets. So let's look at active deception. The attacker comes in through one of many methods. They land on that foothold system. 
but it's rarely the place they want to land. So we know they're going to do reconnaissance, they're going to do lateral movement, and here we want them to find the breadcrumbs, either on the real asset, the fake file, the fake data, the fake email, or a fake account in Active Directory. We know humans like to look through unstructured data, files, emails, and docs to find this information. We know malware is machine structured. It likes to look through apps, uninstalled data, and web browser data. In either case, we're going to lure uh, the attack man or machine over to the decoy with the desired interactive services of gauge, and that gives us the opportunity to then have our detection and our response. We keep all this automatically updated, as previously mentioned, and as realistic as possible. So whether there's changes, the whole deception layer automatically updates to new network uh, updates or new assets and new changes. Now, our end goal is active response. We want to use this as a post-breach detection system because we know attackers are getting in through common methods, and now we have this early detection when they come in and hit the foothold system and move to the decoy. So, if you'd like to learn more about active deception, please visit fidelissecurity.com.